we are very blessed to have this morning for our speaker, Dr. Johanna Board. I could spend the sermon time telling you about her life, but she would rather you get to know her one on one and you will be blessed. She holds a doctorate in Oriental Medicine. This past Sunday, we had the privilege to uh, see her graduation here in Phoenix at the Phoenix University of Theology that was held at Grace Temple. And it was a beautiful service. One thing about Dr. Board, She's a newly baptized Seventh-day Adventist. And God has brought her a mighty long way in her life. And she's Dutch Indonesian. And yes, <laughs> I want the two of you all to get together. <laughs> and also, uh, she calls Norway her home today by way of Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> so as she comes before you this morning, as you open your hearts to her and mind, we ask that you would receive the message that God has through her for us today. Hear ye her today. Amen. Amen. You saw that I did not kneel. And that was because two days before I left Hawaii, I was hit from behind in my car. It was a hit and run thing. The police said, we know who it is. I said, how do you know? He had lost his license plate. <laughs> so you're with me, church. Good morning. Good morning. Today, you heard the job description of Jesus. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus' job description is our job description. Amen. We have to do this. Yes. It's part of our faith. Amen. And you know, faith, as the topic says today, faith gives courage. It was a lot of courage that this lame man had sitting at the gate while Peter and John were coming. They said, look at me. And he looked up and thought, no, they're going to give me some money. Silver and gold, we do not have. But we can heal you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, this guy was sitting here thinking he was getting some money. And then they promised him to heal him. He had faith in Jesus, but he didn't know them. It took a lot of courage for him when Jesus took out his hand to take that hand. What if? What if I'm dis discouraged again? What if nothing happens? So many healers have been here. Nothing happens maybe, but that Jesus, you know, there's something about that name. All right. yeah. He had the courage to meet Peter's hand. And the Holy Spirit went through him, and he could stand up. Praise the Lord that this could happen. Amen. As a doctor, and I've been that for a long time, I had lots of miracles. I want to tell you two stories. One of them that had to do with faith that gave me courage, and one to do that, ha that gave courage to another person who had faith. Three sisters came to visit me. The middle sister was schizophrenic. She had a sickness of the mind. And these two sisters 
wanted her to be healed. And if I could do that, I said, well, acupuncture does a lot. But it will take about two years, three times a week. Oh, that was no problem. And then the Holy Spirit gave me a picture of two very uh, sad people. One of these people was the woman. She was about 52. A woman and her husband. They were not happy. And I tried to figure out why are they not happy? If she's going to be healed, why not happy? And then it struck me. This woman was in a home where her food was served. She was not about not to stay at home because that was impossible. Her food was served. She went to bed. Everything it was spread. Everything was all right. They were entertained. They could walk. They could do everything. She lived like a princess. So I told the sisters, what if she gets healed? Social security is not going to pay her anymore. She won't be in this home anymore. She's living like a princess, and since she has not gone to school, she might scrub the floors of whatever it is. You think she would like that? Would she be happy with that? And instead of not wiping the floors, could you come, you sisters, come to their home, provide them with money, provide them with food, provide them with whatever she needs? Do you have the time for that? You are, have, you are having children. You have a full-time job. You are having even more children and having a full-time job. Can you do this? Can you support her? It take, didn't take much time before they said, no, we can't. Well, this two years of acupuncture three times a week, that's $80 per time. It's $240 per week in two years. That's a lot of money. I was tempted not to say that to them. And with only that, pa that patient, I didn't need anyone else. The thing was that I didn't have any other patients. I just arrived in that town. The temptation was terribly big. But I said, if you cannot support her, I'm not going to work on her. And that was, okay, I felt good with it, and I felt that the Holy Spirit made me say that. It took a lot of courage for me to say no to that patient, but my faith was good. What happened? 24 people came, because these sisters were so impressed of me saying no, that they sent their families, friends, 24 patients within three days. 24. How many months has two years? 24. An abundance of patience, an abundance of money, and I could live very well. Amen. But it was my faith that gave me the courage to do this. Amen. Thanks the Lord. Amen. The other story is of a young man, 30 years old, a carpenter, the son of a carpenter. He hated his father. His brothers worked for the father too. And this father was abusive. He was not good, not good at all. This young man came to me after having traveled 24 hours to come to me. 24 hours, when you walk on crutches. He had been in Turkey on a vacation. Turkey, Asia Minor, Turkey. They had been hiking, his brothers and his friends, and he, and he fell. Just scrap sores, nothing special. So they went on hiking. And when they came back to the hotel, he took a shower and he went to bed. Well, the water in Turkey is not as clean as the water in Norway as he was used to. Because the water that you get from the spring is so clean that you can drink it. No problem at all. And when this young man woke up, infections. He stayed the day, but in the evening he had to be sent to a hospital where he got some 
extra bacteria infections. He stayed at that hospital for a long time. And when he finally came out, his right hand was like that, and his left foot was like that. And then he came to me. <laughs> I looked at it like, OK, why are you coming to me? He said, because you're closest. I said, Excuse me? You travel 24 hours and telling me that I'm closest? He said, no, I mean you're closest to God. <laughs> oh. So, well, can you lie down on the table while I wash my hands? He could do that. So I washed my hands and said, God, you, you don't abandon him. He believes in you. Don't, don't help me. Help, help, help. So I went to him, and I'm good with feet, you know, so I started with the feet. And after I'd done what I was supposed to do, the whole leg and the feet came there, and it was just as the other one. And I thought, thank you, Lord, that's a good one. Then I worked on all the muscles, because that has to be done. When you reset bones, muscles have to adapt to that. And when I saw that this feet was in place, I said, did you feel something? He said, yeah. I said, what did you feel? He said, electricity. OK. Can you look at your foot? And he looked and said, wow. Can you stand on it? And he stood on it. I said, how does that feel? He said, normal. OK. Can you walk to the door? And he walked to the door. Amen. I said, how does that feel? Is that normal? So I gave him his crutches. And I said, well, I've done enough for today. Come back tomorrow. Shall I call a taxi for you? Or shall I call your mom who brought you here? He said, no, there's a taxi stand around the corner. I can walk there and then get home. I said, OK, good luck. Next. In the evening, his mother called. His mother lives about one and a half mile away from where I had that practice. She called and said, you know what? My son that you worked on today, I was like, yeah, he walked home one and a half miles. And he couldn't even make the six steps to my, to my chair when he came in. So he walked one and a half. I said, praise the Lord. Not only that, the mother said, he had to cross a river. And when he was in the middle of that bridge, he threw his scritches over the railing into the water. How about faith and courage Amen. to do that, to be sure that he was going to be all right. Throw it away. Lord, you did it for me. The next day he came. And hands, you know, I'm, I'm not so good at hands, I think, I thought. So I did work on every other thing except that hand. But finally, I had to get there. And by that time, I was sweating carrots. I'll tell you, it was terrible to go there to that hand. So I said, Lord, help me then. Now I'm there. And then I heard the voice. Do with the hand as you did with the foot. OK. So I was there. I did with the hand as I did with the foot. And it came totally in place. It was not withered anymore. It was just like the other hand. I am sure that if I only did this to that hand, it would come in place. Because what I did was nothing compared to what the Lord did. So for me, it's so important that it's not only giving with faith and courage, but it's also receiving with faith and courage. It's very, very important. And what is faith? As Brother Cleophas said this morning, faith is not certainty of knowledge. It is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Thank you.